Uh, and I've gone on record as saying just about every business that I know in some form or fashion should be blogging. So now I'm going to go again um, and give you the common arguments that I get in terms of why certain businesses, I ask the question, I'm not going to ask any of you to confess, I don't have a blog yet, that's okay, we can talk about it later. Um, is, so here are the common arguments as to why people are not blogging. Number one reason, I don't have the time to write a weekly blog or a month, whatever it happens to be. Pretty good reason, right? Because it does take time. Um, but not a great reason. And the reason it's not a great reason is because you're making the assumption that there's some law somewhere that says you have to blog at some predefined frequency, otherwise it's not a blog or otherwise it doesn't work. That happens to fundamentally be untrue. A, there is no law, and B, there is business value. So let's say you start a blog tomorrow, because you haven't started one yet. And let's say, I'll pick some random market now. Um, let's say you're a biotech patent attorney, and you're selling uh, patent services to life sciences companies in the Boston, Cambridge area. Um, you can start a blog, and you write two blog articles, let's say, just all. And then you stop. Never write a blog article again. That's all you do. And yes, Google doesn't like the fact that you stop blogging, and that's okay. But your customers do. Your prospects do. Because what those two blog articles do, essentially, the, um, in the first two blog articles I think that you should write, should answer the question, why am I in business? Why did I start this? What are we doing? What makes us different, essentially? Um, and probably some sort of customer story that says, when I wake up in the morning, I'm hoping this kind of customer walks in the door. And it helps people understand, essentially, put a personality behind the brand, behind the company, and a blog is a really easy way to do that. For some reason, all of us have a genetic flaw in our brain that when we sit down and write website copy for like the homepage of a website, we do not talk in human. We talk in marketing speak for reasons I still don't understand. Um, and we make this mistake at HubSpot too. But when you write a blog, you, for some reason, you feel like you have this permission, which is really, really good, to actually sound natural. This is, oh yeah, you know, we did this you know, project with the customer last month and here's how it worked out, here's why they picked us, and here's why it was so great and why I want more of those kinds of customers. Um, so, so those two, and I've, I've seen this, the reason I kind of put this out there is that I've seen small businesses get started and those two blog articles, the only two they ever wrote were their single largest lead gen source within a period of about six months because people read that stuff, right? So let's say you even pay for traffic, you're handing out business cards and they wind up at your website, the place they will go depending on how far in the sales cycle they are, to learn more about you, they'll go read the blog. They will. Increasingly, they will. So you should start. Frequency, not a good reason, or lack of frequency. Second argument I get is, I am in such a boring industry, no one on the face of the planet would ever want to read a blog about this, whatever industry I happen to be in. And that's patently untrue as well, as it turns out. If there are people willing to buy in your industry, there are people willing to read useful, informative content, or consume. It doesn't have to be read, it could be videos, it could be anything. Uh, so I'll give you one case point uh, that we had uh, last year at HubSpot. So we have a customer out in, uh, in Vermont, Vermont, that builds special fences for llamas. I kid you not, specialized fences for llamas. Uh, and obviously, not particularly interesting to most of us in the room, but as it turns out, he's got a global market and there are very few providers or whatever, and he knows that particular business really well. Um, and so he started blogging, and he is all, he's all over it. Right? It's like multi-generation business, and it's working. So, and he's, so he started with blogging, just writing articles like, oh, here's how we make our fences, and here's, like when you're picking a fence, here's the 14 things to look for or whatever, and here's why this fence doesn't work for that breed of llama, whatever the case may be. Then he started doing videos just going through the factories, like in small, this is a small operation, but uh, what my message to you is that I don't care how boring your industry is, if you think people are out there or not out there looking for that content, you're wrong. Either you're wrong today, you're about to be wrong, so it's just a matter of time. Uh, so it's, I would swim with the tide if I were you on that one. Wow, this is about as much, as worked up as I get at nine o'clock in the morning, honestly. It's, uh, I, I'm never up at 9 o'clock in the morning. We have a, a standing rule at HubSpot where no one's allowed to uh, book a meeting with the founders uh, prior to 11 a.m. Uh, because I'm up at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning every night. But anyway, so that's, we'll talk about blogging. So you want to be an industry leader in terms of drawing traffic, um, and, and it's not that hard in lots of your industries because most, most of your peers haven't, are not that crucial yet. They're not, they haven't gotten the message. They, haven't, they just haven't gotten it yet. Um, so it's not too late. You should be able to start, and I'll talk about, and this is the big one. And this is the other mistake people make. They start a blog, 
and they automatically jump to the conclusion that the blog is really about selling and marketing and building a brand and all these other things because the reason is, oh, well, we hired a marketing person and part of what they're going to do is they're going to create a blog. Uh, and I'll tell you a couple of things. One is the early days of a blog, and I'll call it the first, let's say, six months, it's going to be supremely frustrating because no one, like in week one, nobody will read your blog. You'll read it twice and you'll show up on the analytics report. Uh, the following week, your spouse might read it because she forgot or she or, he or she forgot that, you know, she got tired of telling you that they hadn't read it yet, looked at it. Um, then you'll start sending emails out to your contact list. Oh, I have a blog, you know, like to whoever you have in your Outlook uh, groups or something like that. You'll send it out to your newsletter, newsletter list. But it's very, very frustrating in the early days. But despite being frustrating, my message to you here is the mistake that people make when they first start off blogging is to treat it as a sales and marketing tool instead of what it is. What you want to do is you want to establish credibility. You want to say something useful and not sell. Resist the temptation to sell early. And this is going to be counterintuitive. It's like, oh, I'm spending this money. We hired a person. It's like, we're, we're not out to do X, Y, Z. We're out to sell. We're out. I'm as red blood as a capitalist as anyone in the room in the most positive sense of the term. What I'm telling you is that if you sell too early, it is doomed to fail. And the reason is that there's so much content out there and people see through that overt sales pitch. They just won't read it. You won't get the subscribers. People will not forward it to their friends. You're not going to build up this readership. The way to do blogging, business blogging well is you start off and you maniacally focus on the industry's problem. Like in the early days of the HubSpot blog, the writers for the blog, including ourselves, were forbidden, forbidden from mentioning the product that we sell or solution that we offer. Didn't talk about it. Weren't allowed to talk about it. It's like, oh, here's what we think is wrong with the marketing industry. Here's, the, here's where we think it's going. Here are the kinds of problems people seem to have. Here's what's going on with uh, you know, print media and advertising and all these things. We would bring in research and we'd do surveys and we'd do all this stuff. Everything except telling people what we sold. Everything except that. And the reason was, you know, absent that kind of commercial signal, people subscribe. It's like, wow, these guys have useful things to say. They sound reasonably bright. Um, I'm going to subscribe to this blog, either via email or RSS or whatever. And so we build up this readership. And what happens as you get to a certain point in time, you've built enough credibility where you can start turning the dial. You can say, oh, we've got 10,000, 5,000, whatever readers now. Now I can start slowly, but I can start saying, well, by the way, if you have this problem, you know, we have a solution that looks like this. Uh, as it turns out, HubSpot still doesn't sell directly on the blog, like the blog article itself will never mention the product. So we do have calls to action forms and we generate thousands and thousands of leads um, every month. But anyway, so don't sell too early. It's tempting. Uh, the reality is it, it just doesn't work. Uh, people will see through it. You will not build up that readership. And the, the key in the early days is to get that traction going. Um, just get content out there that's useful. Um, the other thing is, as you, for those that are already blogging, um, one thing that's worked very well for us, and we'll talk a little bit more about measurement as we go further along, is to experiment with different types of content. So a blog article doesn't have to be you know, a 600-word essay on, or not an essay, but a 600-word article on XYZ. It can be videos. It can be podcasting. It can be, um, and, and we've tried all sorts of different types of content. Uh, I'll give you one example because it's interesting. Um, I had one, I took the slide out because it's hard to read for people from back. We did cartoons. So we had a bright idea. It's like, oh, we're, we're fun-loving kind of people. Whatever, we'll write cartoons. We'll drive. We'll hire a cartoonist and we'll do cartoons, which we did. About marketing. So still on topic. Not We didn't write you know, cartoons to go for the Sunday newspaper or anything. And the funny thing is, uh, and, and none of us expected this, as it turns out, that particular type of content had the highest ROI of anything we'd ever done. They were funny. They were short. Took some people like 20 seconds to consume. Uh, we've done two dozen. A lot of them are in the book. Um, they work. We don't know why. And they work not just from my, oh, it, yes, people say, ha-ha, yes, HubSpot is cool. Yes, they maybe come to the website and they read it and you get traffic or whatever. No, we get leads. We're maniacal about tracking traffic, visitors, leads, and then customers. We track our funnel all the way through. We'll spend lots of time, I'm sure, today um, you know, talking about measurement and how uh, marketing and sales integrate. But so my message to you is, as you get into the blogging, you're not going to know what kind, so it could be how-to articles. It could be in-depth research. It could be surveys like, oh, yeah, we have 500 customers, and we ask them this question, and here's the results that come back. All sorts of different types of content uh, work in differing ways it's, uh, based on the industry. You will not be able to predict what's going to work in your market. Try it. Try one of each. Try two of each and measure the results and see what happens.